This is Echo 3, and let's discuss a low-tech rescue of a Kerbal in solar orbit. On Reddit, a new player asked for help rescuing Bob. It looks like the player was trying to go to Minmus, messed up the insertion burn, and was then flung out of Kerbin's sphere of influence into interplanetary space. Being new to the game, and still early in the tech tree of a science mode game, the player was unsure how to save Bob and all that wonderful science he'd collected. So I cobbled together this monstrosity that would have enough delta V for the mission. I needed to budget at least 3300 meters per second of delta V to get into low Kerbin orbit, then about a thousand meters per second to eject Kerbin and get reasonably close to Bob. The rest I was a little unsure how much I was going to need for the rendezvous, matching orbits, and returning to Kerbin, so I tried to budget in a good margin of error. I wanted at least 1500 meters per second for all of that. I made getting into orbit a little bit more complicated as well by using the solid rocket boosters to do most of the initial work, but using a swivel engine on reduced thrust to help with control. Once the SRBs were decoupled, I brought the swivel back up to 100% power for the rest of the stage. The final stage is powered by a terrier engine. Fortunately this engine was available because it's a good choice for vacuum optimized engines. Once circularized around Kerbin, it's time to plan how to reach Bob. I decided to time warp until I was at a point where Kerbin's orbit is basically tangent to Bob's. From this point, that's Bob's aphelion, Jeb was able to set up a retrograde ejection burn from Kerbin. It looks like he can force a pretty close encounter between his and Bob's ships. For the time being, the goal is just to get the target markers as close as possible. Uh, you see the two orange markers there. One's the closest approach and the other one's the target marker. I want to make it look like they're basically touching each other or, or pointing at each other. And that's what we're setting up here. We don't have to get perfect or anything. We'll set up the rest of the maneuvers once we get closer to that point. And we are about right there. Again, you can just take your time on this kind of thing. We're just trying to set up something close. And there we go. It looks like we got those purple markers right next to each other. That is ideal. Now we can then time warp to our ejection burn. And the ejection burn is going to take a little bit more time because we're using a terrier engine and it won't have the greatest thrust to weight ratio. Get, those things are fine for orbital maneuvers. You don't need a high thrust to weight ratio. We're not landing on a planet or anything. Don't have to take off. So you can have a thrust to weight ratio of less than one. Now Jeb's going to start this burn in something we can do too. As we get really close to finalizing the burn, we can actually cancel the node and do the rest of it by watching. So I'm going to eyeball the last 10 meters per second or so of this burn just to make sure we get that closest approach as, as good as possible here. We eyeball that and usually I can do a little better than what I had initially planned with the node as long as I'm careful with this. And we're in good shape. Now we'll just time warp until we are about a day away from the closest approach to Bob's craft. Jeb's going to make sure the nav ball is put into target mode and he's going to burn on the target side of the retrograde marker and this is a little tricky to see because sometimes the retrograde marker and the anti-target marker are really close together. If you have ever done rendezvous it's a very similar procedure we're just rendezvousing out in solar orbit. In order to get Bob and the science over to Jeb's craft the two crafts will need to get in the same basic orbit and within two kilometers of each other. So if you've ever run, done rendezvous with around a planet or a moon, this is very similar. The Redditor who sent me this save file is very new to the game, so I doubt rendezvous and docking were something that would have been a thing he was comfortable with in the first place. But that's alright. To me this was a really fun challenge to do. I've, it's been a long time since I've stranded a craft in solar orbit, and especially with this low on the tech tree, I consider it a fun challenge. And honestly, I play the game for fun, so it looked like fun, so I did it. 
Now we are really close together. We're going to finalize these, and when we get within two kilometers, I can hit the bracket keys, and that will let me switch over to Bob's Craft. And this is on PC. If you're using console versions, you're going to have to use the console controls. With Bob, we can then gather all the science from his stranded ship. And I don't know if the Redditor had gathered this solar science or not, so I was going to go ahead and just gather everything I could and help him out as much as I could before I sent the save file back to him. If you are not familiar with the default controls for flying EVA, you should know that they are different than the other flight keys. So you should look at the key bindings and familiarize yourself with how they are set up or rearrange things so they work for you. In this case, I use shift and control to go up and down, where W and S are for forward and backward, and A and D are for left and right. And you can use Q and E to rotate your Kerbal, although you can also in my case, rotate the camera to achieve rotation with the Kerbal. Get really close, burn just oh, a little too far. All right, go up, Bob. Here we go. Get in the craft. Let's go home. Yeah, uh, it's helpful. I set this craft as the target for Bob, and it made getting over there a little easier. Again, having the nav ball in target mode. All right, science is transferred. Kerbal is in the rescue pod. Now we need to plot how to get home. In Kerbal Space Program, generally, you can spend time or you can spend Delta V with some of these maneuvers. And our orbit and Kerbin's orbit are pretty similar. So we're going to have to spend some time to find an efficient transfer window to get back to Kerbin. And in this case, I'm eventually able to find a maneuver for only 80 meters per second of delta V that will get these two back to Kerbin. Unfortunately, it is going to take seven years to set this up. Now, for Kerbins, uh, they don't have you know food or any kind of requirements unless you're playing with a mod that adds life support. So I just chose to spend time instead of fuel, and we got a pretty good encounter set up with Kerbin. For the sake of watching, I did cut out those seven years spent in time warp. It, was <laughs> it took a long time on my part just waiting, and that's even with better time warp. The last thing we're going to do is we'll set up some maneuvers to aero brake and slow down into Kerbin so we can land in those nice warm equatorial oceans. And I'm going to set up this last retrograde maneuver just just to slow down a little bit more of our velocity so we can land safely. I wanted to make sure these Kerbals will be A-OK. -okay. And I even threw in a heat shield. Probably would have been alright with all of that without all of that. I just wanted to make sure everything was alright. If you enjoyed this video, please activate the like button. Would you like to see more rescue missions or have ideas for future videos? Please leave a comment with your thoughts. This is Echo3, and thanks for joining me to discuss a low-tech interplanetary rescue mission. I will see you next time.